Sex is good. I know it sounds like I'm stating the obvious, but believe it or not, we have been conditioned to believe otherwise. The truth is that our need for sex is so normal, natural, and healthy, but our relationship to sex and our ability to most effectively meet that need has been impacted by the culture we live in. Some of the most common issues with sex that people deal with are not having enough, avoiding it, having it compulsively, or just not knowing how to enjoy it more. In the US, our culture is deeply rooted in puritanical beliefs, with a very narrow scope of what acceptable sex means. In a nutshell, unless it's with someone of the opposite sex, whom you're married to, for the sake of procreation, then you're a sinner. Sure, our culture has evolved over the years and has become more open-minded and sex positive, but the stigma attached to all sex outside of that narrow scope still does linger. This is apparent in the censorship of nudity and sex on TV, the lack of sex education in our schools, and even uncomfortable conversations we can have with people we're meant to look up to, like our parents, teachers, even our doctors. Sexual abuse is another thing that we don't talk about directly, or at all. If this is a part of our experience, we oftentimes believe that we have to keep it a secret, and that only adds more shame to sex. We also believe irrationally that we're only loved because of what we can offer sexually, and not because of who we are authentically. And in later years, we might attempt to soothe those emotional wounds through having sex compulsively or avoiding it altogether. There's a heightened level of shame around sex for gay men because we grew up believing that sex with another man was dirty, gross, and unnatural. This only makes it that much more challenging for us to be able to find a greater level of comfort within our sexual selves. I remember when I was going through puberty and discovering masturbation and fantasizing about men. And right before I would finish, I would consciously make a shift to think about women in hopes that that would help correct what I irrationally believed needed correcting. That's shame. Sometimes drug and alcohol use can seem like the answer to the discomfort and shame we feel around exploring and expressing our sexuality. Sure, it can help us have the experiences we wouldn't otherwise be so bold to experiment with, but it can lead to greater sexual risks, add to the myth that sex can't be fulfilling without substances, and it's just one more thing that reinforces the idea that all kinds of gay sex is bad. Greater stigma also means less conversation, and even fewer resources to learn about sex as a gay man. One of the few ways we're even exposed to sex between men is through pornography, which capitalizes on fantasy and creates false expectations and even more feelings of inadequacy. Sometimes we might find ourselves getting lost in porn for hours because overindulging in that fantasy is a way of numbing out from other uncomfortable feelings. Porn also helps perpetuate hypersexuality within a community of people who are already struggling to know how to connect in more intimate ways. Here's the issue. Intimacy and sex are two different things. To paint with broad strokes, Intimacy is more of an emotional connection, and sex a physical one. Both are great when they happen either together or separately, but we can't confuse them. If we do, then we easily trick ourselves into believing that sex alone is a way to fulfill our need for intimacy, leaving us inevitably feeling unfulfilled and confused as to why. As gay men, we're taught to feel shame about who we are at the core, making us more afraid to expose that through intimacy. So, how have many of us learned how to resolve the conflict between our need for that intimacy and our fear of rejection? Well, we can avoid sex, or we can ramp it up that much more. When we're literally stripped down and that physically close with someone else, it helps create the illusion of intimacy. The problem isn't the sex, it's just that at times it can be misused to avoid other opportunities of emotional connection and then can actually add more shame to our sex lives. Sex and gay relationships can also take a hit and suffer. When we invest into a partnership, we build an emotional connection and develop more intimacy. The more intimate we become, the more our irrational fears of being rejected and the shame attached to being with another man get stirred up. The defense mechanism against this fear is to detach from sex on a regular basis or at all or even just from being fully present in the moment. Find balance. Like everything else in life, balance is key. So be sure to check in with yourself if your sex life is going into the extremes in either direction. 
Talk about it. It's really okay as long as the main intention isn't to be provocative. With more open conversations about sex, it becomes less taboo and much more normalized. Stay present. Sex is so much more physical than intellectual, so get out of your head and focus on what physically feels good. And stay in the moment without needing drugs or alcohol to help you do that.